Hi guys, this is Aisha Tap, and today I'll be talking about the EV3 gyro sensor. So I have my robot here. So the gyro sensor, let's start with what it is. The gyro sensor is a, a cool sensor that <coughs> that is in EV3 and it's also in many other places, such as remote control helicopters, segways, other robotics, and even your phones. So now let's explain what the gyro sensor does. The gyro sensor, it can detect its orientation. So I can detect if it's this way, or if it's rotated this way, or if it's rotated this way, or if it's rotated this way. And you can detect it as an exact number <coughs> in degrees to the nearest degree. So the gyro sensor, <coughs> some gyro sensors can only detect on one axis. Some gyro sensors can detect on three axes. The EV3 gyro sensor happens to only be able to detect on one axis. So, going back to the example of the phone, in your phone, there are gyro sensor. So, if, like if you're ever playing a game where you have to tilt your phone, then the gyro sensor is the thing that detects your tilting. And in the remote control helicopter, the gyro sensor detects if the, robot, if the helicopter is tilting and it'll make it straight so the helicopter doesn't accidentally go out of control. Now, let's get back to EV3. So, I'll, now I'll talk about some, of the, some other uses of gyro sensor in robotics. So, one of the biggest uses of the gyro sensor is for accurate turning. So, the logic for that would be the robot keep, uh, activates the gyro sensor and keeps turning until the gyro sensor reports, let's say it wants to turn 90 degrees. So, it'll start, it'll keep turning right until the gyro sensor detects 90 degrees, then it'll stop. So, now I'll demonstrate. So, I click the button and it'll turn right 90 degrees. So, so that uses the logic that I just showed. Also, we can use it to go perfectly straight using a PID logic, which I'll explain more later on. It can be used for a segue because the segue needs to detect if it's tilting because then it needs to come back. So the gyro sensor will detect if it's tilting. Or it can be used like if you have a robot that's maybe going to another planet or something going to unfamiliar surroundings, then it doesn't know like if there's really steep hills or anything. So the, rope, so the gyro sensor can detect if it's going on a steep slope, if it's going on too steep, and then there can be a <coughs> the calculation to see. Air, and if it's going on the too steep slope, then the robot will come down so to make sure it doesn't fall off. Another use of the gyro sensor is as a relative GPS. So, using the gyro sensor for turning and the rotation sensor, which measures the distance you traveled, you can make a relative GPS. So let me show you an example. So, first, it would it would start here. It would turn maybe 90 degrees, then it would go forward 200 degrees. Turn another 90 degrees, go forward maybe 300 degrees. Turn 45 degrees, go forward 400 degrees. Turn 135 degrees, go forward another 400 degrees, and it will get here. And you can keep repeating that <coughs> to get to where it needs to get. And the going forward in degrees is because the rotation sensor it measures in degrees, but in actual you can measure in degrees in as any unit. And so, now let's go back to the point at which I explained earlier, going perfectly straight using a PID logic. So, <coughs> what that is, is that it'll, the robot, I made a program where the robot will start going backward, and then when, if, I, if I bump the robot, it'll just come back, so it'll always go straight. So, this is done using a PID logic. So, I, now I'll explain the PID logic. So, what the PID logic does is it starts, the entire logic starts with P. So, this diagram shows a pretty clear representation of P. So, <clears throat> the turn, the error, is how far off the, so the robot, let's say, when it's, at, when it's going perfectly straight, the gyro sensor reads zero degrees. So, the error would be how far uh, uh, more like if it's too far, if it's further to the right, then it would be this. Further to the left, it would be this. And then you can see the, and then this is the turn, like how quickly it will try to turn to correct the error. So let's say if it's going to right, more to the right, then it will turn more. If it's going more to the left, then it will turn 
<clears throat> more in the other direction. And you could see that the relationship is nice linear proportional relationship. Uh, so that's the P part. Now let's go to the I and the D. So in this diagram, it shows the I and the D. So it starts with by, calc by calc getting the error, and the error goes to P, I, and D. I already explained P, and now I'll explain I and D. And then after the P, I, and D, they all get added up, and then they go to the process, which in this case is very simple, just turning them, just turning the robot, and which, and then the process produces an output, how far off of the set point it is, and the cycle begins again with the error. So and now I'll show what I and D are. So I, what it does, is it calculates past errors and tries to cor correct past errors, and D. What it does is it tries to calculate the future error and correct the error before it even happens by using some clever math. And then that helps the robot go extremely straight. Now I will demonstrate. <clears throat>